Hello everyone, I think I'm ready to have you guys play around with the brushes yourselves. So, what you can do is you can come over to my Discord, go ahead and download the newest version, which if I open up, Windows will tell you that it's a potentially harmful application, but it's fine to run. So now that we have the app installed, we can go ahead and make our own brush. So to add a brush, what we need to do is we need to create a new brush in app data, Gabe voxel game brushes. And so we can just create a new folder in here and I'm going to call it pumpkin because that's what we're going to create today. So what we can do now is we can open this up in VS code. So the first file I want to create is the config.json. And this file describes all of the information about our brush. The second one is the brush info which is a shader. The next one is a brush kernel, which is another shader. And one last shader is the brush input. And then the last one I'm going to create is actually going to be an image. So I'm going to open up GIMP and I'm going to create a new image. I recommend you use a size of 128 by 128. And then I'm just going to draw a pumpkin real quick. Okay, I think that's good enough. I'm going to export it to this folder and then call it image.png. Doesn't matter what it's called. And the reason it doesn't matter is because what we can do is we can say what we want the image to be in the config JSON. So first of all, we're gonna to wanna to give this brush a display name and I'm gonna call it pumpkin. And then I can just say what I want the custom image to be, image.png, and there we go. Now we have our config JSON for our brush. Okay, so now what we want to do is we just want to set up the very basic stuff we need in order to create the brush. Firstly, I'm going to go into the brush input shader and I'm going to create this struct which has the brush settings. And in here, I'm just going to have an empty variable because we don't need this for now. And then in the brush info, I'm going to say pragma once, and then I am going to create a function that defines what the brush's size is. And here we can just return f32 vec3, something like eight by eight by eight. And then I need to make another function, which is the custom brush origin offset, which specifies where the center of the brush is, which allows you to change where the brush's actual bounding box is relative to where the cursor intersection is. So I could say something like F32 Vec3. Let's just put it at zero for now in order to show off what it does. And then the last one that we need in this file is a function that returns a Boolean and it needs to be called custom brush enable. And this function takes in two parameters, F32 Vec3 P0 and F32 Vec3 P1. And here I'm just gonna return true. Those are these two files done now for now. And what we need lastly is the brush kernel, which actually defines how the voxels are placed. We need one function in this file, which is the custom brush kernel. And this function takes in, in brush input brush, as well as an in out voxel result. So this is the voxel that we're going to be modifying. So now we could say something like result dot block ID equals block ID stone and result dot color spelled col is equal to f32 vec3 101. This will make it pink. And so there's our our three functions, our config JSON and the custom image. So now if I say reload brushes, we should see the pumpkin in the app. So if I click on pumpkin, we can now see that it creates a box that is eight by eight meters and that has the definition we gave. So it's made of stone and it has a pink color. What you can do is you can press B and that will toggle on and off whether or not the brush should follow your cursor. But as you can see, the brush is positioned exactly at the mouse. And so if I go ahead and do something like changing this brush offset to be negative four, negative four, then what will happen is once we save it, we'll see that the brush is now positioned at the center of the cursor, but still is offset upwards just from the bottom. Now that we have a sort of brush in the world, let's freeze it by pressing B. And so now we can move our mouse around and reposition where their camera is. Let's get to writing the code. 
if you want to have some more screen real estate, you can squeeze this in and you can press T to remove this window and N to remove this window. So we just have our console out the bottom and this allows us to see what our errors are. Let's preview that real quick. If I were to type some bogus in this file, then when I save it, we'll see that the errors come out down here saying in brush kernel.glsl, this one, on line five, compilation terminated because on line four of that same file, there's an undeclared identifier, this guy right here. And you can clear the console right there. So in order to create this brush, what we're gonna wanna do is we're gonna want to just comment this out for now. And so now we can see it just disappeared. So this brush input has a bunch of parameters. The first thing we're gonna wanna know is the position of the voxel in the world. And we can get that relative to the brush's origin by saying brush.p. So this is the position of the voxel in world space relative to the brush. So if I were to say something like, if the length of brush P is less than one, let's say, then only then should we put in this stone, then what we'll see is that there's a sphere that is centered around the brush's origin. And that brush origin, again, is exactly where you are looking. So it's the point in the world that you're looking at. Then we can do some actually interesting stuff with this. So the best way to get started is to use signed distance fields as our shape generators. So what we're going to do is we're going to have a distance, let's call it value, and I'm going to set it equal to the max signed distance. This is a predefined macro in, in these shaders that you will be able to use, and it's just a big number. So then we can say something like, I want the value to equal the signed distance union between itself, let's say a signed distance to a torus, so SD torus, which will take in a po position, in this case, the voxel position, rush.p, and it also takes a vec2, which denotes the big and small radius of this torus. So I could say something like two and 0.5. And so what'll happen is our value will now be the signed distance to a torus. If that signed distance is less than zero, then we want to actually set a voxel. So now if we save, we can see we now have a torus in the world. I actually have a bunch of shapes like this and you can go to the GitHub of this project in order to see a list of all of the ones that exist. Let me pull that up real quick. So if you go to the GitHub, which is linked below, you can go into the docs, and here we have a file full of all of the combination operators, like SD union, which we just used, as well as all of the shape operators, like the torus, which was all the way down here which we just used. It shows an example usage of it. So, and you can just go ahead and copy this right into the code. If you were to copy it, then what you would see is it start to it try to generate it. I want to move the torus up. So I'm gonna shift the input space by saying brush.p minus equals f32vec3, and I'm gonna raise it up by, let's say, uh, by one meter. And so this actually gets us pretty close to being able to you to create a pumpkin because what I'm thinking for a pumpkin is that it's like a sphere with some ridges around the end. So I'm going to use this torus, rotate it on its side, and then rotate it around in order to create uh, those ridges. So let's try that. First, I want to rotate the input space. So I say F32 vec3 p this is my new input space and i'm going to say rotate on the x-axis the brush position the old input space by some angle let's say 0.5 times pi so the axes that we have are x going left to right and then um y going in and out as well as z going up and down and so now that we've rotated it if we wanted to rotate it about the um, the vertical axis, I know it's a little confusing, but it's 
not actually rotating the object. What we're doing is rotating the input space. And so even though what we just did made it so that the Z axis is what is vertical, we're actually still in the original input space when we try to rotate about axes. And so if I wanted to rotate uh, around what is now the vertical axis appearing to us, I would need to rotate around the Y axis. And so if I did that, you can see that it rotated 90 degrees vertically. And so I'm gonna create, I'm gonna make this thing a little bit smaller and I'm gonna move it up a little bit, let's say two. And so now I have a little circle here. And what I can do is I can say, just have a for loop for u32 i equals zero, i is less than, let's say uh, four or three even, then what I need is I need to rotate on the y-axis by some angle. And in this case, I want to rotate halfway around the circle divided by three, which is the number of segments that we have, multiplied by i. And so now what we have Uh, I needed to rotate brush.p. Yeah, so I needed to rotate my input space once, and then I rotated it again. And so now we have three segments that are kind of like ridges. So I think I want five, actually. So let's do five. All right, now we have five segments. And so another thing about pumpkins is if we look at them, uh, I mean, even in my crew drawing here, we can see that it's kind of squished at the top and bottom, as well as if I get a reference image up, they're usually flatter at the top and bottom than they are on the sides. They're not perfect spheres. So let's try to do that. What I'm gonna do in order to do that, um, actually first I'm going to change this color because it's annoying me. Found that this looks nice. There we go. So what I can try is I can add in a new sphere. So let's say SD sphere and I want it to be above the pumpkin. So I'm gonna subtract from it its origin, F32, Vec3, 0, 0, and I'm gonna move it up. The, I say, say two meters, and I no longer have P, I have to say brush.p. Okay, so brush.p got rotated. I actually don't want that to be the case, so I'm going to change that by saying F32, Vec3, P, 0, is this, and then I'm gonna rotate P0 to create P1. And so now brush.p is still intact, which is our original input space. So you might be thinking, what am I gonna do with this? Well, if I change the radius, we can see, we can almost start to see, imagine like, what if this sphere was cutting out on this uh, bottom part? So I, what I can do is I can say the difference between these two. SD difference. And so instead, what it'll do is it'll cut in. And you'll notice that the inside of the pumpkin, because they're toruses, is actually empty. So one nice thing is there are also smooth counterparts to these combination operators. So if I said SD smooth difference, then what I can do is I can add another parameter at the end, which specifies how smooth we want it to be. Basically, if we had it at zero, it's the same thing as using a normal distance or difference. But if I change it, we can see it starts to smooth it out a bit. So if I were to say like 1.5, we can see it actually cuts back on it a lot. But sadly, I am going to close up the center of the pumpkin by taking it, <clears throat> taking another sphere centered at the origin with the inner radius of the original object. And I'm going to SD union it. So there's no longer a smooth parameter. So now it's kind of like the pumpkin is squished at the top. I'm gonna tweak these parameters a little bit. So maybe making the radius of this smaller and maybe making the contribution, or sorry, maybe making the smoothing factor less and maybe making the radius a little smaller too. <clears throat> and then what I can do is I can just do the same on the bottom. So uh, maybe I move it down a little bit and maybe I want the smoothing factor to be a little higher. And so now we have 
a little bit of a base of a pug pumpkin. You'll notice that we just have one color, but that doesn't need to be the case. I can take this whole region, put it in its own block, and then start a new one if I want. And if I do this, I want these values to be unique. So I'm just going to move this value into this scope and create another one over here. And so now I'll have another one, another output. I'll say it's stone, but instead we'll make it green. And what this will look like is if I add another object, like say SD union with a sphere, but above, let's say two meters above again, then we get a green sphere above it. And so let's, let's go ahead and turn this into a stem of the pumpkin. A uh, color that I like for this is this one here, kind of greenish gray. And what I'm going to do is I, instead of using a sphere, I'm going to use a round cone. And then I'm not going to shift the input space. I'm instead going to use two points. So F32 Vec3 0, 0, 1.2 and F32 Vec3 0, 0, 1.7, so let's say. And then because it's a round cone, we need to give two radiuses. So these two points designate the start and the end of the cone, I guess. And then the radiuses sig signify the first radius and the second radius. So let's say something like 0 0.2 and 0 0.1. And so when I save, we can see we have like this little tiny little object here. I think I want to shift the stem a little bit just to make it look like it's curved a little bit and I'm going to move it down. So let's say 0 0.9. And so now we have a, a little stem on the br on the brush pumpkin on the pumpkin brush. <laughs> and we can move it around and we can even place it down. All right. Thank you for watching.